Welcome to the Birth of Business Central. Hey, I'm Eric, and in this video, we're gonna turn the clock back to the year 1987. IBM has just introduced the PS2 computers and uh, the token ring network. And in order to, you know, sell some more PCs, sell some network, and, and kind of promote the idea of, uh, of network PCs, IBM wanted to have uh, a multi-user accounting system in a lot of places. Denmark was one of them. But what IBM had on their shelves could not work in Denmark. You know, the currency, multiple currencies, and Danish VAT, and lots of stuff. So they looked at the Danish software market, and, and they noticed a small single user program called PC Plus that was very popular. It was created by three guys, uh, Jesper Torben and, and Peter. Um, and they approached them and said, hey guys, could you create a multi-user version of that for the IBM PS2s and, and the Sony Network? And they did. Actually, they didn't. They created a brand new application and it was called Navigator. In lots of places, it was uh, promoted and marketed as IBM Dash Navigator because it was solely sold through IBM partners. You have to become a IBM business center or something in order to be allowed to sell it. Um, I was straight out of uh, high school in 1990 and was on a uh, on on a uh, seven weeks. Uh, training at IBM to be allowed to work with this. But that was on version three in 1990. But in back in 87, what they introduced was version one and, and very soon one by 1.1. 1 .1. Um, and if you ask around, nobody has ever seen this. Uh, this is like a, a unicorn uh, piece of software. Uh, but if you bought it, in 1987, you would get this in 1987. So I go on. Here is a leather bound red or gold, I'm not sure what the color is, gold letters navigator. So this is what you would receive if you purchased navigator in 87. Um, you'll also receive, you know, the put them in a zip lock to are up where I copied them. Uh, you would receive a set of, of disc, either three, three and a quart, three and a half uh, disc, or five, five and five, five and a quarter floppies. Anyway, so you'll get a nice leather bound manual, gold letters and even gold trim in, in inside the, the binder. And I thought that was pretty cool here on the very first page we have a, a you know almost like a mission statement and and it's interesting that um that this still kind of matches what we do today uh it tells about that a lot of the 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 existing software out there are not very good and have forces people to change their habits and the way they work um and the navigator solution is to you know work with people the way they, they used to work and just make it better by adding computer and uh, it's also saying that um, you know the shape of the uh, the user interface um, has to match how the manual procedures look but also has to be replicated throughout the system so you don't have to learn a lot of different things which is what we know today with the concept of, you know, all the UI is kind of the same. Um, so that is pretty cool. This is a, a, an awesome manual that takes you through all the stuff. Uh, and uh, I was so lucky to get my hands on this because in 1980, late 88, I think 1988, the company my dad was working with for at when um, purchased Navigator and he never 
through it out. So now I got my hands on it and even better, 34 years after, these floppies can still be read. Uh, so I have installed the system uh, on my age appropriate, time appropriate uh, IBM PC that sits behind the camera. And um, I'm going to give you a tour of the software. Uh, so sit down. This might be one of the longer videos, but I think, I hope you find it interesting. I find it very interesting at least. So uh, check it out. This is how it all started back in 1987-88. And the way it started was in DOS. This was a pure DOS program. Later on, with version 3, they also did some did OS2 and they did Unix and all sorts of stuff. But this version was pure DOS. Um, and the first thing you would do was actually run the installation program. And since this was in Denmark and never intended for anything but Denmark, this is all in Danish. I'll do my very best to uh, to, to translate. Um, and if you have any questions about something I forgot to translate or something, let me know in comments below. I will gladly help make sure that that we know what goes on. And by the way, my mouse is here and that's totally uh, inappropriate. So I'll move that away because we can't have a mouse here. Um, so this, this is the inst.com program and you can install the program. You can create a new database. You can create a bat file uh, and you can create a bat file. There's actually three different bat files. You can create a single user bat file, which is what we're going to use in a minute. You can create a workstation bat file. So, so this is actually a client server be before anybody called it client. So, so this is called a workstation. Uh, and you can create the server. Um, you can create a copy of this, like a backup. We can expand the database and that's done from in here. So I installed this and start doing lots of stuff and suddenly I got these nasty, nasty, nasty errors and the program crashed and so stuff. So now the mouse is out of database space. So the database size, when we get it from the floppy, uh, is 352 kilobytes. Not very big database. Uh, anyway, I have expanded it a bit here. We can delete a database. We can install a name, so register the copy, which I also did, and then we can quit out of this. If you look at what I, so what I ran was the inst, uh, and you can see that that program is barely two kilobytes. The Nami S, with, which is the standalone version, uh, is two and a half kilobyte. The workstation, the client, is two and a half kilobyte, and the server is two kilobytes. And these are all .com files. And a .com executable uh, in DOS means that it can only use 64 kilobytes of memory. Uh, so, so you can never create a program. Well, well, you're not supposed to be able to create programs that uses more than 64 kilobytes as .coms. But um, Peter and Torben were creative dudes, so. Uh, so the programs are the program are called different things. Dot mod, dot p or d. There's no p or d. Um, so what you can do in DOS is that you can install something as a resident program. So it sits in memory, and so you can install multiple programs in memory, and they can interact with each other, which is how this works. So all this was programmed in Turbo Pascal. 3.0, as far as I know, um, and maybe we should no run it. How about that? So I'll run the Navi demo bat file, and we can see that that starts with defining database equal database cache equal 20 kilobytes keyboard is AT and monitor is EDA, uh, which is the the way of handling um, 
command line parameters was kind of the same all the way up till, uh, well, I guess up until VC version 14. So the way you specify parameters of fin sql.exe, same thing as here. Anyway, we get to the main menu. Uh, and, and this isn't as in Danish as I want you. So let me, I'll, I'll translate as good as I can. So we see the beautiful logo at top uh, saying Navigator later on. They kind of kept this very IBM inspired. Um, uh, it's kind of the same way that IBM used to print a logo on, on, on PCs. Um, we can see that this is copyright 87 version 1.18. And N1, so it was purchased for one user only. Uh, so we have, let me put this on the screen. Sorry. We have the option of, interesting. No, stupid keyboard. Ah, you see that? So we can open a company. We can create a company. We can delete a company. We can uh, create a backup, restore backup, and then we can handle, no passwords and passwords are actually users and uh, you can specify a user and a password and whether they're super or not so that's the level of, of security we have here um, and the pc i'm running on is as i said eight megahertz ibm at so that's the what you're seeing is the speed of how the application will be for a user in a 1988 so I will open a company and uh, there's a demo company called Demo Company. And then we get to the main menu and, and, and check out the, the, the ASCII art here. It's beautiful. So we have a main menu and as we move the cursor right and left, we can see that we have master data on the first column. We have posting, we have sales, purchase, printing and information. Well, let's take a quick look at some of these here. So the first called finance, that's the Danish word for the, for the chart of account. And as soon as we look here, we can see, hey, this kind of resembles stuff that we have seen before. So we got the begin sum, end sum, and just sum and account. We have, I press F6, which was the keys so the key pattern for this program was more or less the same until uh, 2009 Classic. Um, so in this case, it's either a, a income statement or a balance sheet account. Um, we have the VAT here, so there's no card behind this. And one thing you would notice that there is no menu on the screen. Like, what, what, where, where is the menu? And there, there is no menu. But there is. So if I hit F1, we can get a, um, a function key overview and everything is done through F keys. So we can see now these are the functions that are without touching anything. If I touch control, then we get something else and touch alt, then we get something else. And there's a few things that, so something has really lived on until uh, 2009 Classic. So if I'm here, you can see control F2 says design. So if I'm here and I hit control F2, I go into the sign of this page. So it's not the classic client. Um, and in this case, the, how you just sign a, a, a list like this is these are all the fields that are available. And, and down here we have optional um, available fields one to six. So I could say this is, uh, this is, no, this is Eric's field. And the way you actually put it into the into the screen is giving it a column number. So in this case, I'll give it column number six because the last one was five. Uh, and I exit out and the screen reloads and now I have Eric's field. Pretty cool. Um, in here, we also have some other things. So we have it like a statistics page kind of looks like something we know. We have a, a, a movement page, which is a, a matrix kind of page that we kind of lost on the way, which I, 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 I do like them. So if I move the cursor left and right, I change between different 
period so year and and since this is all we have to scroll all the way back to the 80s and i don't think we're on a uh, account that I actually have anything posted on it so let's go back to this guy and i'll try again uh, so we go back to a year and then we go all the way to the 80s and we can see the movement is in in 87 and fourth quarter and 12 month 49th week because danes love week numbers by the way so trivial information here then week numbers are everything in the month anyway we go all the way to date if we want so it's kind of a cool uh, little screen another thing we have in here is, is the budget um, and um, the budget is kind of fun so you can see that in this case we have actually dimensions so department dimension and it has a, a call so if i put in 600 here and then I go to the menu again and say distribute budget and I hit F9. Then you can see the 600 got distributed between the two dimension based on a distribution thingy key. So, so two parts for so this dimension and three parts for this, this dimension out of the five part total. Pretty cool. Uh, and again, you know, same thing. All the F2, uh, control F2, and you're in going into the um, uh, the designer if you want to. Um, we have up till five budgets, so budgets are not a uh, something that you can just decide how many I'm going to call. You have five budgets to work with. Anyway, so let's get get exit out of. Uh, the uh, chart of accounts so we have customer and vendor and they they kind of look like exactly like what we know uh, most of these fields would actually still work um, we have a fun UI thing that that you know if I do the F9 to get or F8 to get the uh, uh, the date statistics thing I suddenly get four different ones so here's they kind of ran out of F keys, I guess, and had to create a small extra menu to figure out what you wanted to see. In this case, it's due amount um, for this customer, but we can do F8 and then we can see total due amount. So this now we are looking at all customers. Um, pretty nice. We also have a, a search function. So if I do go down to any field and hit F7 and, and type something, finds the first one with that. So that that's pretty cool and pretty fast also. Um, when we're in the menu, by the way, there, there's a funny thing. So we also have like, you know, there's al always a calculator ready, which is the key here you know these are the function keys so they are laid out the way the function keys are on a ibm model f keyboard and and the the the, the, the number pad keys so you have to the, the plus is very big on that one that's just interesting so vendor the exact same thing as as customer uh, so inventory items uh, that's kind of interesting also um, so here we have something that's slightly different uh, than what we have today. So if I create a new item, so I hit a three and, and now I call it test something or one. Oops, and, and, and never press tab because tab was not something you use. Then it asked me, what kind of item is this? Well, it could be an item. Or it could be a uh, a a something a, a a service. Let's call it a service. Or it could be a bomb. And if it was a bomb, then you can also specify the, the what's in the bomb and so on. Um, so we could we could create a a, a service. Uh, so interesting that when you had service items 34 years ago, then we lost them on the way and, and gained, gained them recently. Uh, so 
that is pretty nice. Uh, what else do we do? Want to say anything about items? There's lots of handling prices and calculating prices and so on. Um, but let's go back to that one. Then the next one is called just called master data, which is company information. Um, so pretty much the same as we have here with one interesting thing that we don't there were no number series so it just says their last uh, last quote number last sales order number last uh, invoice number and so on so the numbers are directly here and the last one in, in this is, uh, is accounting periods uh, which is kind of cool because right now I think I have open two years I have 87 and 88 open and look at the the snazzy uh, uh, ASCII art for the uh, for the year at the bottom um, and you also have the concept of deleting stuff here so you could you could the, the, the box and I don't know why the mouse Going down here because I, I do that anyway. The box here is is whether stuff has been deleted uh, from it from this year. So there's no space for a, a, a premium at this point. Um, so the biggest time, the biggest partition you could make in DOS 3.3 was 32 megabytes. So that was kind of a a, uh, a limitation. Anyway, the next column is, and we're going to do that very quickly. You know, this is the, the general journal. And, you know, it's just like the general journal, you know. And, and we have up to five. So, um, so same thing. We have a uh, item journal. Same thing. Uh, we can do uh, purchase, sales, positive adjustment, negative adjustment production and usage um, then we have inventory adjustment and uh, lots of text here uh, but basically transferring uh, the inventory cost and and usage adjustments into the GL per item group we, we're getting back to groups in a minute and then we have a one called journals here and that's kind of interesting so you specify that and right now we are on journal number one and we're gonna say that now we're switching to journal number two so if you like we you do month end and then you start the next one so you can do one journal per month if, if that's what you want um, and we have one for uh, for GL and customer and vendor and we have one for inventory so that's the one at the bottom Okay, so, so the next one here is kind of interesting also. So this is sales. And we have quote or sales order invoice credit memos. And then and, and we open this and this looks pretty much like a, a you know a normal sales order. Who is the customer? What is the uh, what is the uh, delivery address? There's no um, sell to. Oh, sorry, there's no bill to it's only sell to um, in this case. And um, so when I move the cursor down and just keep going down, you saw the lines come up, which is kind of a, a nice touch. And um, you can see that this field, and actually that's interesting because I had to put that on screen. So the you, you see this says, let me move the mouse around here. So it says finished. Yes, no. So let's say that I'm going to post this one. And, and here's the kicker. You know what key post a sales invoice at nine? I'm pretty sure that, that nobody at Microsoft, when they re reassigned F keys to, uh, to Business Central and decided to go with posting on at nine, knew this. But anyway, prove me wrong. So yes, I want to post this one. And uh, now it gets mad at me because 
or something with dates that let's do one one eighty eight let's see if that works I'll do paste again so now we're good so because the because the company started with the word the demo you only allowed to work in December and January uh, and and I think that the the la latest open year was 88 now if we're just being curious anyway so now see that we're still here but it's it has told us that this is finished so there is no posted sales invoice table it's just the invoice table and then it, this is marked as done but if i try to delete it it says hey this has not been printed yet you cannot delete an invoice if it has not been printed uh, or you should not delete something that has not been printed um so so that was kind of you know paper trail of everything so you had to print your invoices the purchase module a different set of fields but behind the scenes this is the exact same thing uh works this the exact same way and and here you you can't see if something is, is finished or not unless you actually go in so okay let me here f3 and then add that this is finished very very strange that that out of the box that you couldn't see of an invoice whether it was finished or not posted uh, so sales and purchase pretty much so the next column is called printing and 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 printing or reports were very very important at the time you know everything was still paper-based and one of the big big advantages of navigator was that it came with a buttload of reports you know there's tons of reports here um and what you also could do and and this is where it gets even cooler is that you see we have one called print and then we have one called report but report is actually so let's go and find uh, let's go down to invoice here and this is the designer thing this is actually a a, a the report designer so we have a top we have a the 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 sales header we have a transport we have the sales lines uh, with conditions and stuff like that and transport and total and filler and bottom and and full-fledged report designer which is was very easy and very powerful to work with so uh that was um that was quite interesting and and yeah you could just you know write stuff if you wanted and f3 would enter the line and then you could let's check the menu so we can do f7 to add a field uh, and we can set up conditions and, and stuff like that so it, it's pretty pretty cool and of course since everything was printed on matrix printers you know we have a page height of 51 lines and page width of 76 characters um, so very very interesting very cool um, we also have printers of course so you can design a printer saying that in this case an IBM graphic printer you can say that you want to print the ghost when you have the ghost and, and so so on and if we go down to so the letters they come here and then we also have you know bold and uh, bold and double and underline and uh, whatever we call it compressed and white and so on so very very usable and the device could I the generic printer device was called PRN but let's say that we have more than one printer port which we were we were cool with uh, then we could set this that this printer says YRTT2 and we have printer 
selection. So that, that we know that table. We still got that table used the report render, uh, which was pretty nice. And then we actually had a. Let's see if I got something here. So we had a data import module. So we can export and import data. Um, let's find something else. So in this case, it had a a generic uh, importer. So you you could say, okay, what field is where in the uh, uh, in the file, and and what is the date format, and and pretty cool. Something that we don't have anymore. Uh, so a way to actually just you know import a random file. Uh, and of course, we have the opposite of, of exporting a single table. And here, let me let me prove to you that this is this is central sort of anyway. So here we can either uh, export everything, or we can export a single table. So let me exp select the table list here, and count with me. So zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Is chart of count. Seventeen, GL ledger entry, GL entry. Eighteen, customer. Twenty-one, customer ledger entry. Twenty-three, vendor. Twenty-five. Venture ledger entry. Twenty-seven item. You're looking at Business Central. Anyway, I found that pretty pretty cool. Um, that something that's thirty-four years old, and we can still see the similarities between that and what we have today. Anyway, we are we are getting past the half hour and and we are on to the last column uh, so here is and so the first one in the information column is called groups and um, why have different groups if you can have one group definition that's everything so in this case we have groups and uh, groups are customer groups groups are vendor groups groups are item groups so if we go to you no know, a customer and select a group we can we get these groups if we go to a a vendor we select groups we get the same if we go to a, an item and we find the group field then we get the same thing so instead of all the different uh, customer posting group, vendor posting group, item posting group, and so on. We just have groups uh, because there weren't that many fields that were needed. Oh no, guys, fun. Then we have BAT, and again, people from Denmark can can have fun in in seeing that there was a twenty two percent at that time. Uh, and uh, I one and you one codes lived on for so long in, in, in the Danish setup. So that was also kind of funny. We have payments. And here's another, you know, uh, date calculations were born here. So 10D, we, we all know that one. Uh, LM is current month plus 30 days. Uh, so we had date columns. Let's do an F1, F1 and see, okay, how is this actually working? So 8D is eight days, 2U, two weeks, uh, LM, uh, current month, LM plus 10, and so on. And we have LU plus 1U. So this month, this week plus next week, um, U15, so fixed on the 15th of the month. Um, and the last one is the last Thursday in this month. So that's uh, current month plus one day minus UD4. 
which means uh, four days. So I guess we get to the, uh, the D4, which would mean a Thursday. Anyway, yeah. Huh. So date uh, formulas were already existing 34 years ago, and, and it's pretty much the same as we have today. We have currencies, German mark, French francs, Italian liras, and and so on. Um, and well, in Denmark, the comma is the uh, the decimal uh, separator. We have interest for uh, for uh, financial interest uh, on on reminders and so on. We have price groups, and and the only definition of price group is whether it's it's including uh, VAT or there are discounts on it or not. And then we have miscellaneous here at the end, which you know, <laughs> again, kind of the same thing that that we saw in here with the with this guy, that when they ran out of space, well, we'll just pop up a random menu in the middle of the screen. So we got text, we got languages we got countries west germany uh delivery uh, methods uh, departments projects salespersons uh and locations um and I'm now 36 minutes, so there are more, you know, more features around the system uh, to do all sorts of things. Uh, but that that was that was the tour to through the uh, the main menu, uh, and the software is pretty snappy actually. You, you know, you you have to you know be used to, to doing keyboard navigation, uh, but it's it does not feel slow to work with at all. Um, another thing that came with this version and let me just actually exit out and I don't want to save any of my setup um, was if you noticed here that there were a, a executable called db check and db check um, up as as this was the first incarnation of the native database um, we used to have a program called no we sorry we did not have a program called wherever the slash are on this keyboard called c doc uh, the database uh, administrative recovery tool uh, microsoft had that tool or maybe you shouldn't have that tool at least anyway in this first version we actually had a database utility and uh I, I love the uh, <laughs> this is this is pure Danglish as, as a Dane living in Canada uh, we got the F1 is database check and deal all six um, uh, and we got a DB path and path size and location so if I specify the database here we can see that our database is now um, 1.6 megabyte and I, if I hit F1 then a lot of stuff happens and it, it verifies that the database is is happy uh, so it runs through all the stuff that's in the database and just then in a second you actually hopefully will get something and this there we go reading so now we have that a lot of these are you know, those are actually the reports. Um, and now we're into the data, so we can see that we have the, the, the so we have 16 customers uh, takes, taking 734 bytes per record. And so we have 11.7 case of customers in the database. Um, pretty nice and database is okay and uh, we have used 68% and uh, yeah 
you have space free. And then you exit out of that. Anyway, that was the uh, a tour of. I my would uh, my guess is that that is going to be the oldest piece of direct related software to uh, to disassemble you can find. Maybe there's a one point oh somewhere out there. Uh, I have never heard about it. I've never actually seen it. But if if you have those floppy drives. Right, those floppies. Uh, I would love to have a copy. Uh, and uh, at some point, I might get my hands on on PC Plus, but I don't really consider PC Plus a, you know, that, that was kind of predecessor of what we saw here. But but as you can see, there's tons of stuff that's in this piece of software 34 years ago, that's still in the software that we're using today, uh, and I find that pretty cool uh, I think as I read from the mission statement that they truly got something right with, with this piece of software and I still believe that and I think it's important for at least for the people at Microsoft to understand the uh, the giants they stands upon uh, they stand upon um, and, and the tremendous work that happened and, and the value of what was made and how right they got it back in the Stone Age. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there's some specific functionality of Navigator 1.1a that you would like to see. Um, I will be glad to demo it. Um, otherwise, have fun, stay safe, and I'll see you again in the next video.